Yeah, and but, but the subject we were talking about was the weaponization of the federal agency, and that's just one of them. And then, then they get, you know, then they open up these censorship portals the 37 hours after President Biden takes office, where now you have the FBI involved in American politics, and, you know, which we ran them out in the 60s, you know, because we were outraged that they were even, they were bugging Martin Luther King and the Black Panther yes. Party, and, and Americans were indignant about that. Why do they think this? I mean, why are we have we gotten to the point where it's so normalized that now we're okay with the FBI running a portal to censor political speech in our country, and then inviting in the CIA and the CISA and the IRS? I don't know what they were doing in there, Nothing and good. NIH and you know CDC and all these other agencies. DHS, which all had a hand in censoring American speech. So that was another th thing. And then the use, you know, which we saw for the first time in American history of the of the judiciary uh, to, to, um, to get rid of candidates. You know, what they tried to do to me, they're suing me now in a, in a dozen states. I've, had to, I've been in trials for the past three weeks. You know, I've, I've spent most of my time not campaigning uh, but being uh, sitting in court um, in cases that are trying to get me off the ballot. So, like, well, I had a million people, million American citizens, sign petitions more than any candidate in history. Everybody said, I'd never do this. It's impossible to be in the ballot in 50 states. Well, guess what? We got on the ballot in 50 states. And we did it by getting a million citizens to sign petitions saying that they wanted to vote for me. And the Democratic Party now is suing me in all those states to make sure that those people cannot vote for the person they want to. When I was growing up, the Democratic Party was of RFK and, and JFK was the party that was fighting for voting rights. It was fighting to make sure that every American could vote for the candidate of their choice, no matter whether they're black or white or where they lived or Democrat or Republican. Now the Democratic Party, today's Democratic Party, feels so unconfident about the candidates that it's putting forward. And it feels the only way it can win the election is by getting rid of the opponents. And, uh, and you know, either using the courts against President Trump to lock him in jail and to embarrass and humiliate and discredit him, or using the courts against me to uh, just to throw me off the ballot, even though the voters, you know, in New York State, I had to get 45,000 uh, ballot signatures in 13 congressional districts. I got I got 137,000 in all uh, 26 congressional districts. I did twice when anybody wants, and it, we did it easily because people wanted to see me on the ballot. New Yorkers wanted to see me on the ballot. Why is the Democratic Party suing me in frivolous cases? On what I ground? spent a whole week in in, in a trial for that case, for two cases they brought, and another week in another trial for another case. And you had to pay for this? It's costing me $10 million to defend myself. But on what grounds are they suing you? Like, you don't have, they don't like you, so you don't have a right to be on the ballot? Or what? 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 In New York State, they're suing me by, they, they can't challenge our signatures because we got five times as many signatures as we required. So, that, you know, normally what they were doing in the first yeah. states, they're taking our signatures and they were calling everybody. They can get their numbers and they can get their, you know, cell phones, et cetera. They we're contacting everybody who's signa and trying to talk them out of it, trying to say, to get them to say, you know, you're hurting democracy and, you know, you should, uh, you know, weren't you fooled when you did this to try to get it? But they, they never succeeded. Uh, they're, they're in New York State. They're suing me because they say that I did not, I don't live in New York State. So I have three residences. One is in New York. One is in my home in Massachusetts, which, you know, is part of my family compound that we've owned for, you know, a uh, hundred years. And, um, and then in California, where I live with Cheryl. So I moved with Cheryl to California in 20. 14, so 10 years ago. And I lived in New York all of my life. I lived there since I was 10. My father ran for Senate there and was the senator. 
I moved there when I was 10. I've only voted in New York. I've always considered myself a New York resident. I've lived in the same town for 40 years in Bedford. I've lived in 13 different residents in that town at various times. And But I always wanted to stay there. And when I moved out west with Cheryl, um, I made an agreement with her that, you know, when she retires, we're going to come back to New York because I feel like I'm a New Yorker. I, I, I didn't want to vote in California because I don't know anything about the politics out there. I was raised in New York. I know all the politics, all the politicians. And so I wanted to vote. So I kept an address there. I voted that address. That's my only place I've ever voted. I My car is registered there. My driver's license is there. My law office is there. I pay income tax, almost all my income taxes from New York State. My law license is there. I don't have a law license in California. And uh, my hunting license is there. My fishing license Most is there. Most importantly. My yeah. falconry license <laughs> is there. So I have all my birds there. You know, I keep them there. And so, you know, but they're suing me saying I'm not a real New Yorker. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I contrived the address out of fraud and it's a sham. And um, here's the thing is that I consulted a lawyer when I, when we declared independent and began getting ballot signatures, I consulted the best ballot access attorney in the country, Paul Rossi. And I said, I got these three different residences. Which one do I put on the ballot? you have to put the same residence in all 50 states. So you can't choose another resident. You know, you can't, I can't put California in one state and Massachusetts in another state in New York. I have to tell the people, otherwise I'm lying to somebody, right? Right. So in a couple of states, for example, Maine, where we are right now, and in New Hampshire, those states say the only place you can put down as your domicile is the place where you vote. And in New Hampshire, I actually had to take an oath in front of a notary that I voted in New York because otherwise I, they couldn't have put it down. So I had to put New York in every state because I had to put it in Maine and New Hampshire and a bunch of others because you have to put the place you vote. Anyway, the DNC is suing me, saying I defrauded the public because I really live in California, and and they got a you know they got a judge who was uh, you know right out of the Democratic machine, and who violated the Constitution and every precedent to say yeah they're right. So you know I lost in the lower court, which is what happens. We're doing that. We're losing in these lower courts, and then we win in the appeals. There's a hundred percent chance I'll win in the appeal, but they don't care. Because it's going to take me a while, and they get the headlines saying he was thrown off for fraud. 